Hey there folks, thanks for joining us on another board game night. Uh, tonight we're doing a review of Vikings Gone Wild, the board game from Lucky Duck Games. Uh, the designer is, and I'm sorry guys, but I'm going to mess this up horribly, is Julian Vergunjin. Vergunjin? Hey, you guys can have a look. We think Vergunjin. Vergunjin. Sorry guys, I'm not good with names. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to give... speaking. Yeah, we're speaking. <laughs> We're going to give you an overview of the game here, so we're going to explain a little bit of the rules, um, so you've got a general idea of what's happening, uh, and then we're going to do a gameplay section where you can follow along, and uh, we explain what we're doing, and play through the game, so you can see what uh, the game flows like, and what it's like to play. And then afterwards, we'll give a verdict of what we thought of the game. So, this is a deck building game, um, very unlike... Oh, uh, and the players I have with me are Tony, Molo... Martin, and wild. myself, Jason. Hang on, no, if, no, I, if no, I flash no, no, my no, chest, Jason. will you yeah. give us beads? <laughs> Mardi Gras! Is it not like Girls Gone Wild, no? <laughs> Alright, so, uh, what we have here? We have uh, Odin's Path, which is where you have different type cards scrolling through that you can buy for your deck. We have some standard cards over here, we've got attack cards, defense cards, and building cards, which you can build into your village. I'll explain about that as we go along. We've got end of game scoring cards and then um, mission cards that you can cycle through during your turns. Uh, you can do one at a time. And then we have divinity cards here which you can win when you reach certain thresholds on the victory points track. Uh, the gameplay is still in a four player game. You play till 40 points and then that signifies the end of the game. And then we do end game scoring. You do less points um, when you play lower number of players. Or you can, if you want to make the game higher or harder, you can set a, a higher number. Uh, each player, as with all deck building games, will start with a certain amount of cards. So you've got beer, viking, warriors, and some gold. I think it's six beer, two gold, two warriors. That's correct. And you have your missions face up here. You can complete one mission a turn. So for example, if I buy a defense card, I get one victory point. That'll go into my uh, completed pile. And then at the beginning of the next turn, I get a new one from the top there. Uh, we have one building in our village, which is Town Hall Level 1. It has an ability which here says max of three buildings, town hall not included. So, and you can upgrade it for the cost of three gold. And you can see underneath there's three levels of it essentially. And then they obviously give you more points and so on wow, and so on. Five points for each building. Yeah. So there's a couple of phases. I just want to show you the little cheat card. So at the beginning of the game, you get production, or beginning of the turn, your production phase. That's when you, any of your buildings, like the gold factory and the brewery, that generates resources. They will generate resources. Then you get the drawing phase, where everyone draws five cards from the deck. Uh, and then the player's phase, starting with the player with the awesome little first player marker. Um, we'll get to do their action phase, it's where they spend their beer and gold, and use their vikings and other attack cards that they may get, to either attack Draco, which they can do once per turn, to get either gold or beer. Or if there are cards in Odin's Path, like the undead, they can attack those, or they can attack other players. If you attack other players, you put these markers on their buildings to show that they've been attacked because you can only one player can only be attacked once per round. So, for example, if I attack Molo, which will probably happen, uh, that means anyone else on that round yeah, cannot attack him. Basically, Jason will rob the joy from everybody else. By attacking <laughs> <him>. <laughs> and the more buildings you attack oh, on a bro. on a round, will give you bonus victory points. So if you only attack one building, you get one victory point. But if you attack, say, four buildings, you get seven victory points. But it's not... Uh, your, I mean, your building is still there for next turn, so it doesn't completely massacre you, and you're then out of the game pretty much while you repair. Exactly right. <laughs> and finally, after the player's phase is all done, so everyone does their turns going around clockwise, uh, you go to the storage phase, so any um, of those resources that you have left over, you can then store in containers. And at the end of the round, one card from Odin's Path will move up. And we move on the first player. And you ditch your cards and draw five new ones. There's also this in the centre. So there's a generic kind of, whatever the hell that is, called Draco. who you can He's got a defence value of one and you can get beer or gold from him. And there's this exchange rate there as well. So two gold for a beer, two beer for a gold, or gold for swapping out one of your mission cards. Uh, we go. So standard stuff. Um, what we'll do is when we get to the gameplay section, we'll explain more what the cards do and um, that sort of things. But I just wanted to give you a general overview now, so you know what you're looking at and what we're going to be going for. 
and then we'll go to the gameplay section. So we're going to get started, we'll come back soon. Alright, welcome to the gameplay section. Uh, we've had a few rounds already, uh, we'll go through that in a second. But uh, this is what the score looks like at the moment. So Molo's in the lead with 13, then you've got 10 for Martin, 9 for me, and 6 for Tony. Um, we've got we've basically gone through the deck of mission cards, so everyone's got the last missions available. Yeah, it feels a little bit like there wasn't enough, if I'm honest. <laughs> well, it's just to get a way to get people going first. Uh, right, so Mo Tony is the first player this turn because he's got the giant axe. So the first thing we do in the production phase that was axe, by the way, not ass. <laughs> first thing we do is do a production phase where you gain resources based on what you produce. I so I get a beer, you get gold, Milo's got three beer and a gold, and Tony, what you got? One, One beer, two gold. All right. So that's the production phase, then the drawing phase, we get to draw cards, and if you have an empty mission, you then get to draw a new mission, but obviously there isn't any more anyway, so that's moot. Out of curiosity, if you want to see what I drew, this is what I got. Nice. Okay. So, Tony will take away the player phase, which is part three, where we play the cards from our hands one at a time, or one player at a time, right. until done. I am going to attack Molo's town hall with Thor. Thor! <laughs> so I'm going to use the assassin to make uh, a discard one unit card. Oh, from the attack? Yeah. yeah. Alright, so before you, before you guys carry on. So Thor is an attack of six. Uh, the building's defense is a six. So as it stands at currently, um, that would be a successful um, victory for Tony. But Molo has now played an assassin card, which is possibly good. Yeah, I'll show them. He's really good. <laughs> so he either gives you three attack on your turn, or you can discard a, a unit card that is attacking you. So that would mean. Thor's discard. Yeah. But because he's discarded, you don't get a victory point for no, defending him. The attack so. is gone. Yeah. But it's still your. It's still funny. <laughs> still funny, because I was going to get lots of victory points for that. You yeah, would have got yeah, 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 four points. That would have been. Yeah. What else you got, Tone? Ooh, it is so annoying. So, <laughs> so annoying. It is a little. It is lots. So that's karma coming back to you for stealing my bloody yeah. gold. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of points doing that. Isn't it? Uh, I will attack Molo's Drakkar and his brewery. Wait, you want to attack oh, so Drakkar then? Drakkar so. for four. I uh, can't do anything about that. Okay, so that's a successful attack. You put one of these little explosion markers on it Boom. to show that that building A has been attacked and B, Molo, has been attacked this turn. Then brewery. So you're attacking that for one. Okay, yeah. uh, kaboom. Wow, you really would have got a lot of points. Yeah, I would have. Yeah, I would've. I would've. that would have been a reckless attack there. So that's, Does he get points now? Shouldn't have started. Uh, well, with Thor, once he's really? declared, finished his round. Oh, okay. <sighs> Does he get the bonus now then? Is, is that a plus one point? Right, yes, that'll be plus one. It will be once he's we okay. work out his points. Just wait, wait him to finish his turn. How many cards you got left? You don't have to obviously spend all your cards. No, no. Just see what there is there. So currently, just to show you guys, he's attacked two buildings. So two buildings is worth three victory points. Obviously, if he had successfully attacked the town hall, there would have been five points. Then plus four for the bonuses, he would have got nine points that turn. That would have been a massive swing. It would have been. It would have been. So many points. Yeah, so but unfortunately, so Molo thwarted you. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't happen often. Indeed. Annoyingly did. But with this, I can buy. I spend two gold. That's a gold card. So that's three gold. That's three gold, and I'll get myself up there. 
So you look, you've got how many buildings? You've got five. So you can have one more building before you have to upgrade your Actually, town hall again. I'll spend two gold and keep one of those. All right, what did you buy? I brought recipe theft. Ah, you can steal beer from... Oh, I don't like that. Beer. Stealing, Stealing beer. beer. That gets refilled. I've got a card left, which I will keep. All right, so points-wise, you attack two buildings. So that's with three points. And you've got a bonus one from the Drakkar, which means you got four points. So one, two, three, four. Almost close to your next divinity. Which I would have ready, Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Molo, what have you got? Okay, I will get three gold from my treasure chest. Okay. Plus a gold. Plus I will convert those two into a gold. Using this conversion, yep. yeah. And pay this one big lump of gold to upgrade my town hall to uh, eight. Okay, so that goes on there. Does he get that those points now? Um, yeah, he does. Okay. There's five, yeah? Mm -hmm. yeah? One, two, three, four, five. Cool. Right, uh, uh, okay. Fat. So then... That's pH fat. I will go and... Um, hmm. What shall I do with this guy? Named Mo. Nothing. I will keep that card. And I will spend those three on an elf archer. Okay, cost three beer. Mm -hmm. uh, the beer is obviously the brown, gold is the squares. And that's your turn done. Mm -hmm. Alright, Martin. I draw two cards. A magic to do scroll. That every turn. Well, you do have two scrolls in your deck. This is true. This it... is true. Okay, first things first. I'm going to do money theft. Tony, thanks for not spending that gold. <laughs> where does it go? Uh, where, where, it doesn't matter. Anyway, it does matter. Well, it, it goes somewhere in your area. So can I put it there? And then what it triggers you... that. Uh, what is that? They have four gold stored? Yeah. No, you only can store it in their storage. Okay, so it'll go there, basically. Yeah. Okay. Alrighty. Um, <clears throat> I might as well steal a beer from Jason. Okay. No, I'll have that one. Thank you. I don't know. If you get, do you get the juice? Oh, okay. Steal a beer from another player's man. Right, um, we'll leave that for now. I'm going to attempt to attack your beer container with Valkyrie. Okay, just out of, I just want to point out quickly, um, Molo's obviously been attacked already. That's why he's got those explosion markers still on his buildings. Tony hasn't been attacked, and I haven't been attacked because we don't have explosion markers on our buildings. Uh, Martin has been attacked. Is that Who attacked you? Was it Molo? Oh, that might have been last turn. Oh, right. <laughs> so... <laughs> I might have been there for two turns, actually. <laughs> I think I'm taking it off. Now, that obviously is to show that you can only be attacked once. So, like, if Martin is attacking me now, that means someone else won't be attacking me for the rest of the turn or the round. What are you doing? You're attacking my beer container. Beer container, yeah. Yep, okay. Uh, with, what, three? What is the rest of her ability? I can bring a unit card back to my discard pile. All right. Useful. Yeah. Uh, well, got, there's nothing I can that do. That is either. all my attacks. Yep. So, do I take a beer? Yep, you take a beer because that's... I'm going to just move this so they can see. So it shows you, its defense is three, but if you do success, you get to steal a beer from the container area. Uh, if there's no beer there, you just miss out. And one point, yeah? Yep. So yellow goes to 11. And then I'll spend three for five, and I think I'll have you. A bone crusher. Is that your turn done? That is me. All right. I, too, have a scroll. It's oh, crap. Two I'm cards. Gold. I'm going to lose one now. Okay. Uh, don't worry, man. I'll steal gold off you. Okay, cool. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Well, thanks, man. <laughs> did, did me a solid there. I didn't lose it, man. <laughs> oh, I just sorted you out, man. Don't worry. As long as you don't play another one, <laughs> you may weep. Um, so, I've got three gold from my cards. I'll use that gold I just stole from you. For a fourth I one. Rub it in. <laughs> Not this gold I have. And I'm also going to use this Viking warrior to attack Draco for a fifth gold. So five gold allows me to buy a tavern. Yay. So that will go into there. It's under construction. Ah, so you don't have a tavern yet. No. Because it's still building. Um, and then I've got these two left. Which... I'm not really sure what I want to do with... Ah, oh, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to spend these two beer, plus 
one of my beers from here and I'm going to buy the other scroll. That can go in there and that gets refilled immediately. Uh, Milo? Yes? Just refill the Odin's oh, path. Right, sorry. Right. <laughs> Another mystery gift. He's got one job but he does it half assed. Yeah. I try to. And I think I that sometimes is. Sometimes can't be bothered to do it half assed. That is my ah. turn done. So it's obviously Tony was the first player. So that ends the player's phase. So now we go to the storage phase. So any beer or gold nuggets and stuff that you have left over, you can then store into your containers. Just to show you, for example, yeah, I don't have any extra. I've now got four stored. Okay. Which gives me three points. And, and plus one there. So four points, please. Yep. Four points. We'll move you one, two, three, four. And that perfectly shows. Now he's crossed the divinity line. So he's got option of these two plus a third one, which is beer taxes. So it's basically the same as that, except for beer. Oh, that's pretty tempting because I have no beer. So he gets to choose one of those, put it into his discard pile as his normal cards. So this is like a divinity thing. The gods are praising his Viking clan for being awesome. Now I'm going to take this one. Yeah. And those two will just be there. Okay. Uh, so that's the storage phase. End of round phase is where we remove these tokens. First player moves on to Molo. And we begin a new route. So first thing we do is production phase. So getting resources from your facilities. Once that's done, you do drawing phase. Did we ditch Three, this? Four, five. No, I oh, forgot about that. That's right. Uh, in the, in the um, end of round phase, we move the Odin's path along. The, the furthest most right card gets discarded. And then we've got a new one coming out. So that's always moving along. The drawing phase is also where if you've completed a mission, you get to get a new mission. But obviously they are empty, so we don't have to worry about that. And we begin now with Molo. Okay. Awesome. Uh, hmm. Hmm. Right, uh, I'm going to start uh, by attacking Martin. Hello. Hello. Or not Martin. Yes, Martin. Okay. I'll attack your gold container with Devenga, who's three plus one for each brewery, so three, so six. That's quite strong, Milo. Thank you. <laughs> um, I will allow this. Ah, excellent. Okay, uh, I will then wait, attack... Wait, oh. sorry. Gold right. container. And oh okay, I will then attack your town hall with my pig at all. Uh for six. Right, and if I play that this time? Then I still win. That, so it's it, it, uh, equal to a higher beats it, so you need okay. one more. Okay. So okay, I'll do that. Uh and uh I really shouldn't take advantage of the knowledge that you have there, but <laughs> I'm gonna, so I'll stop attacking okay. you there. Well it doesn't matter anyway, does it? Oh, because it give me a point, wouldn't it? Yeah. Okay, so um and I will get myself a lovely uh, two attacks for uh, three points, please, Jason. I believe it's more than three. What yeah, is it? Oh, two there. five points and a bar of gold. Now you stake the bar from your storeroom, and this goes one, two, three, four, five. So you've crossed the divinity path okay, or divinity place. Mijolnia. Oh man, you should get that. Yeah, you got that. four. So let's have a look and see what it does. Ah, I can't pick it up. Okay, uh, if, uh, oh, I can't pick it up. Um, uh, if its attack fails, Madrolin returns immediately to your hand. Don't put the camera like that. <laughs> I will have that. All right. Okay. What's rather ironic he couldn't pick the card, though? <laughs> <laughs> He's not worthy. Yeah. No. Okay, uh, I will stab the dragon in the eye for one point for a bar of gold. Okay, so that's three gold, four beer. I'll buy uh, another pig. Pig. Or will I? Yes, I will. Man, he's got two of these. Uh, I was going to say the pigs are really good because you get six points for them at the end of the game if you have the most. Okay, so um, what's left? Uh, oh, okay, I should have played that earlier. Mystery gift. Uh, draw a card, put it in your hand. Uh, if it's a fighter, reveal it and earn one crown. It is not. Okay. I only um, reveal it if it's a fighter. Uh, <laughs> it has. It was a now. beer. <laughs> okay. Uh, can I buy anything for one beer? 
There was something out on the mystery table. Mystery gift. Yeah, we'll buy another. Uh, yeah, another mystery gift. Okay. Uh, With his mystery gift of a beer, he buys another mystery <laughs> gift. <laughs> and I will keep this card ready for action. Okay. Some beer mugs. Come on. Uh huh. There. Right, Milo, I mm -hmm. would like to attack your brewery. Okay, with what? The Viking Warrior. Uh, I will defend against that with my shockwave tower. Damn it. <laughs> Alright, so just to, this has not come up in the video so far. He's obviously had shown what he's attacked with. Molo is defended. So now Molo gets victory points equal to the number of units that attacked him, which was one. So Martin just gave Molo another victory point. Well done, Martin. <laughs> but to be fair, I'm going to attack it again. Oh, yeah, you can have it this time. Okay. All right. And so I'll attack the one next to it. So, yeah. Well, I, yeah. I don't oh, really okay. care. As long as they're one strength, it's fine. So, actually, it would have got five points. But... Well, also another note here: yeah, if Mola had somehow defended those other two attacks as well, he would have got victory points for defending them. And then, if Martin says, "Well, I'm done attacking now," then he would have got total defense because he managed to defend all the attacks, mm. which is another bonus victory point. But he did not. Mm. No. Um. Now, what am I going to do? I think I'm going to spend two gold. I don't believe that. Beer mugs! Oh, I mean, yeah. Ah, another bear rider. That is me. Alright, so now uh, you get victory points. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got uh, three things, so. That's uh, right, two buildings, so three points. One, two, three. Oh man, you would have got a divinity guard as well if you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Here's the reason I attacked him. Should have maybe gone for Tony. He's got three ones now as well. Just stolen some beer too. All right. Oh no, you can. No, I would have done the bigger. This one. is this is my hand to show you guys. So I've got that, this, and these. That's <laughs> these, eh? Yeah. So I'm going to. So I can't attack Martin and I can't attack Molo because they've both been attacked this turn. So I will have to attack good old Tony. And I'm going to attack your beer f factory Contact. on the end there. And I'm using Elvis, which is plus three attack and draw two cards. Uh, I've got no defense, so there you go. Thank you, Governor. But you get a little marker on there. Kapow. All right. Um, oh, that's interesting. So these are the two cards I just drew. That's a nice... Nice little combo there. So, um, I'm going to... <laughs> I'm going to attack with this Viking Warrior for one, plus an Odin's Boost. So I get to draw two more cards and add plus two to attack to a unit. Just give it a shuffle, please, Martin. Not this, not this, not this. Jeez, play it in your plate area, man. I'm not straight in your discard pile. That's true. So, sorry, I'm attacking your gold container for what it's worth. Well, victory points. Well, yeah. I don't, I don't get to... Um, just another one, I think. How many cards did I draw? Yeah, just one. <laughs> so, these are the two cards I've just drawn now. So, now I'm going to play a, a scroll to draw two cards. Holy crap. Um... So these are the two cards I just drew now. So my Viking Warrior is going to attack your brewery. This one, yeah. Mm -hmm. For what it's worth, for one. That's three attacks. Look at me. Going like a Boeing. I should have done you, Tony. Damn it. <laughs> this is my closer. And now, that's all my attacking done, I think. Yes. So what can I do? Um, one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to spend four of my beer to buy this bear rider. Oh, look good, I, I quite like the versatility hey. of that. Yeah, hey, shaman. That's a Shazam. <laughs> Shazam. Yeah, he's pretty good. Um... You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to spend this one beer plus three of my beer things, and I'm going to buy that as well. Yeah, another shaman. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, everything comes out in twos in this. Oh, of course. And I've got 
this is all I got left and none of this is particularly useful I don't want that so I will declare my turn ended there so I got three successful attacks which is worth five points so I go one two three four five which means I get a new divinity card it's time oh, and I wonder if he'll take that <laughs> Jason and card drawing. I do like it. I also do like the gold taxes, which is also card drawing if I don't get gold coins from you guys. So I think I'm going to take that, actually. Mm, yeah, this one's a dick move card. <laughs> so those are left over. And that is my turn that done. Two three cards is sweet. Yeah, okay. really good. I'm going to bring Beer Specialist. I've got one brewery. So that's one, two, three buy myself another gold factory mm -hmm. which gives me the free gold factories to victory but points not yet because that's under construction oh you have to build it first Tony <laughs> yeah. build it first. you thought about building it I'm thinking about it Friday ah and then I have oh actually I I just realised I've got the tavern so I've actually completed this. Spend two, two more points. Yeah. We, we spoke about that. <laughs> ah, so that's come out now. That's, I think that I don't think this has been on camera yet. This is an undead uh, minion. So all it does is, if you can attack it for two strength, you get a barrel and a victory point. And then I will spend four. Beer total to get some gold and a sword. Oh, don't forget, you buy one at a time and they shuffle down, so you oh, might well, find. Yeah. No. I'll buy the gold first. Right. Okay, so that's a good one. A crystal. crystal. See, let's see. Okay. <laughs> and that's it for me. And another undead. Filling out with the little blighters. All right, so that's the end of the store, uh, the player's phase. So now we go to the storage phase. I got nothing to store. You've got nothing to store. No one's got anything to store. So no bonus victory points there. End of the round, that all moves up. We remove any counters, all the combat counters we suffered, and construction oh, counters. Uh, first player moves on to Martin, I believe. Martin. Hurrah. And that is another round done. All right, so I think you guys get the gist. Very basic. Uh, we're going to be playing for... Till round another another 16 points, points <laughs> isn't it? Yeah, so one of us reaches there. So we'll see you guys when that happens. Alrighty then, so we've finished our, uh, our game and uh, we've tallied up the points. Obviously, once the game is done, um, I actually, I, just to mention, I obviously misspoke when I was um, doing that run through. In a four player game, the game ends when you reach 30 points, not 40. In a two player, or less players. Um, two two player of 40, three and four players 30. Yeah. They're going to have pointed that out. Before I'll put a notation up. All right, so as you can see, uh, in last place is Tony. Yeah. yeah. And then Martin came third with 27. I came second with 40. And Molo won with 46. But it's actually closer than that because when we went through these, I thought I tied with him on the accomplisher. It's not closer than that. You just thought it was closer well, yeah. than that. that. That would have put us both on 43 points. Um, and then what you do then is you... Because there's more of these in the box. You get a random selection every turn. So uh, every game. And uh, we flipped over the top one just to see what would happen. And Molo would have won. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, that is the final game. Uh, we're while we're packing away the cards, as with all deck builders, let's have a quick chat with the guys, see what they thought. So, Molo, you won. You can start. Uh, yeah, I, I quite like the game. It's um, a very sort of standard deck builder. It's yeah. Um, I I don't know how to rate it exactly. Um, everything seems to work fine. It's got a nice little system with the score and the points and the attacks and that. So it's a little not quite. Standard. It's it's like a comfort board game. It's just nice to play. It's a comfort board game is a good a good analogy. I suspect, um, like something like Takedo or other similar games, it starts off like very sort of basic, simple, and then you buy add-ons to sort of make it and branch it out more. And yeah, yeah, I, uh, it's sort of like I couldn't score it even a fraction more than seven, but it's definitely Hello. seven. Yeah, it's a solid seven, isn't it? 
Yeah, I, I think I, I kind of agree with you. I mean, I, I haven't. This has obviously been out for a while, just to show you the box here. It's been out for a while, and uh, it's made some decent waves in the industry. I mean, you can see the Dice Tower gave it a seal of excellence. And I've never got around to playing it, actually, but now I finally picked up a copy, and I actually really enjoyed it. Uh, it's a really solid, like Mother said, comfort style board game. It's not too heavy on the, on the, um, the mind, because it's very simple, very basic, you know. Play your beer, play your um, gold, buy cards, and it has a little bit of interaction as well, where you can attack each other. Uh, I really like the divinity cards, which give you a nice sort of big boost, and they do really cool things, but they don't unbalance the game. Um, the missions give you a, a way to follow a path to do something. So if you don't know if you're playing for the first time and you don't know really what strategy to do, it's a good idea just to follow those. Is it a seeded deck? The missions. Um, the one point missions are the ones that go to the top, so each person gets two random one point missions and then the threes and twos get shuffled underneath and the remaining ones go on top so and these are all i, f I felt that was a bit of a detriment to me because i ended up with two threes and one was to store gold four gold one was to store beer whereas you guys both got twos yeah and you guys both succeeded in your twos whereas the three seemed to be like significant investment I mean, to get there for that extra one point. the initial two i got was it was tricky to do and i was just lucky to get cards that I could then do like mm. that Drakkar one was really handy mm. yeah I got a two that I couldn't do so I paid a gold to ditch it out mm. and take a different one the problem is by the time I got to that point in the threes there was no missions left yeah well the missions I, I mean well, last week when we played this D was saying that he felt the missions were uh, the ones that steered the person to victory whoever does the most missions is going to win well um, it, because of that in yeah. this one I think if that wasn't there if that was a different card I don't think it would have made such a big difference no I mean we were scoring a lot more points on attacking yeah this one than this one yeah one. for sure there's a couple others I just want to see there's, uh, these are the few others that they have so you have defender the one with the most uh, defense cards uh, the most beer the most attacking cards and the play with the most buildings the most attacking cards are interesting because I think we all had a lot of attack cards. Oh, yeah. I didn't have any from the, those and base ones. You get that with the sort of king pig come out, so everybody's building towards that. Yeah, as well. I like the fact that they 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 give you different ones to, so you don't know what is going to come up mm. until the beginning of the game. Um, but yeah, surprising they didn't vary the uh, the sort of difficulty of doing them with more points and things like that. So you might have had like some eight point ones, but with a really tough and things like that. They do they do provide a. Um, a four initial ones if you're starting yeah, out for the first time it, yeah. but uh, I mean I think they're pretty varied enough and obviously they got tons of expansions to just show you just as the back of the rule book they got three boost expansions over there and uh, I've also got the Masters of the Hunt or whatever um, expansion which I'll be playing with soon and doing a review for that um, but I think as a standard deck builder I mean it's it's unlike uh, Clank and um, the one from Gale Force 9 with the Dark Elves what's that called? Oh. Tyrants of the Underdog, and obviously trains, and those were the, the boards. They're the ones I tend to gravitate to um, because I don't think this is a board. That, I mean, yes, it's a board, but it's just no. Yeah, that's games. what I'm saying. This yeah. is not there like is no those. Secondary oh, game. Yeah, this is not like those. This is more like to, to the older style deck builders, like Dominion and those stuff, where mm. you're just buying car and uh, Thunderstone and those type of uh, things. Yeah, that was on the yeah. line. Uh, you're just buying it, but um, because it's such a comfortable game, you could play this with your family nicely and easy. Uh, I love the idea of the divinity cards. When you pass there, you get your little power boost, which is really cool. I like the fact that when you attack someone, it doesn't destroy their game. It just gives you a boost. And potentially, if they can defend against you, they get some bonuses as well. So, it's a really solid, really comfortable game. I, I really like it. So I think One thing to note that I think you pointed out while we were playing was that the, um, the cards, you don't score any points off the cards. The cards are mm. just there to allow you to play the game. Yeah. So uh, I think for me, I would score this a 7.5. I think it's a really solid, good deck builder. It's not brilliant, you know. It's not uh, uh, Clank is still my favorite deck builder, um, but I'm very excited to try out some of these expansions and see what other variety you can get with the game. So yeah, I really liked it. Uh, the art is nice, obviously with Lucky Duck as well. The one thing I didn't mention in the overview, not that it's important, but all their games are based off um, computer pro, uh, like mobile apps and things like that, as obviously this one is. So they did a good job in changing this into. I have no idea what that is though. What kind of game? Yeah, I, I don't know it's as well. Deck builder, you can get a lot of games <laughs> on your phone nowadays. I've not played this in the uh, on the app version, but it was a solid, fun, interesting game. So there we go. What about you, Tone? 
Yeah, and you're exactly right. I don't. I wouldn't score it as high as you guys. I don't think deck builders aren't really my thing that much. But also, it doesn't bring anything new to the deck building. No, I wouldn't say it does. It doesn't yeah. bring a single new thing at all. I don't think it's not a new new game. Though, is it? No, a few yeah, years. it's been out so, a few years now. Although yeah. I still, then, I would still think that surprised them really. Yes, <laughs> yeah, I think you know, even you know, if it's been out a couple of years, even a couple of years ago, it's mm. not brought anything new to mm. new to the deck building games. Yeah, what can I say? Um, I would give it a five, but that's just straight down the middle because I don't think it's you know, no innovation, no. Yeah, I think I, I think your opinion is probably going to gel with mine slightly. I think this is completely inoffensive. Yeah, there's nothing to dislike in there at all. You know, it's fine. Everything gels well, but there is really nothing new in there at all. I mean, the I, I guess the kind of milestone or, or goal cards that's probably not been done in the deck builder that I've seen before, uh, but it's certainly not a new thing. I mean, it's been in many many games. Um, yeah, I, I like the fact that when you attack somebody, it doesn't dick them horribly, although you can sort of steal resources, which is a bit painful. Um, and obviously building up your village and whatnot is okay. Although I sort of feel that surely this would have been better to be your village and then have your deck off to the side, but I mean, whatever. Just makes more sense to have like buildings actually on the building, but hey. Um, You'd have needed a bigger board. <laughs> well, yeah, eventually, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, 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 I'm I sort of with Tony. I think I'd probably give it 5.5. I think it's slightly above average, but not much. I think it's it's fine, but it doesn't do anything new. And probably within a couple of weeks, I've probably forgotten it, if I'm honest. You know, in saying that, um, the buildings don't go into your deck or anything. No. So they could have just been sort of tokens with what they do written on the side there. And then you can easily have plonked them onto a board. Mm. Mm. Yeah, mm. very true. Well, I think, I, I mean, I imagine the expansion adds different because there's like the expansion I got replaces all these cards. So none of these are into the. Well, you couldn't actually see that. Uh, <laughs> replace all these cards so they're completely different with some new new abilities and things like that. Hmm. I don't know how it changes the gameplay. Um, it also got some new divinity cards, that sort of stuff. Hmm. So I, I can see there can be quite a lot of variety. Um, I think with the, one of the couple the, of. The things, I don't think it's variety that's lacking. It's, no, yeah. it, the, the, the core mechanisms are literally just go through motions of you've got. Basically, three currencies: fight, gold, and beer. And you just spend that, buy more. And because there's no victory points on the cards, as Molo said, it's not that obvious to what to do to get points. You're basically going for those goals or attacking each other. Well, that's what those, uh, the missions are for. The missions are what. But you get to a steal. point. I mean, we ran out of missions mm. midway through the game, really. So once they were done, and that gets you probably beyond the twelve. Roughly speaking. Well, I think I mean, we were in between 12 and 20 when we ran out, and then we remembered it's, the game's going to end there. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's you got like two more turns after that, and then the I, missions are done. I also, guess. with the missions, I would have sort of preferred you didn't score them instantaneously. You put them face down, so you didn't hidden, know. Yeah. It oh, was okay. hidden but victory points. I, I get that, but the problem is I think they've done it, so you tick past yeah, the triggers to get mm -hmm. the cool but cards. But you could, you could have condensed that victory point track Shortened it, yeah, yeah, and had totally that, agree, and, yeah, and had that hidden. So yeah. that was actually, hidden I, I was, I, I wanted it hidden as well. I thought it'd been more interesting because the thing is, if you can see what a person's going for, then it's, it's not easy to stop because you can't stop them. Yeah. But you know, the problem, I mean, they'd have to be open, and then when you complete, put them on there. So they're, yeah, they're, you put, if you're paying attention, you could kind of yeah, work out. They're, they're open. You'd also need sort of more of a variety of them. They couldn't just be two or three points or one, two, three. Mm. You'd need probably a, a greater range of them. It would have given a bit more mystery to the ending of the game, but yeah, it uh, it became obvious that Molo <laughs> was winning and was going to win about halfway through the game. No. It would, it would have been in the hard to stop you, though well, you nearly did it. I'll yeah, that, that, and, and, and that, I, I think that happens, like uh, I think we were talking about that off camera as well, that probably does happen with this type of game where there's not a lot of variety in scoring in terms of... Well, there's also nothing you can really do about it. Well, that's the thing. Cause, uh, mean, we can attack other people, but it doesn't actually hurt them. Yeah, it hurts. No. Yeah. It, it scores you points. It's quite a rapid way of scoring points if you can get it going. And 
in order for me to accomplish the sort of victory points that I was going for, I had lots of one point games. I was the guy that got hit every turn because of, not that getting hit does you any no, damage. Yeah. But Tony was the one that got hit every turn because people knew that he had no defence. Yeah. Yeah. defence. And so yeah, basically, yeah, whoever went attack first, points. they generally attacked oh, Tony in the later they made a mistake. Yeah, but. I think what what really have uh, benefited you on that last turn was that the fact that you had the guy that gives you plus six, because uh, you managed to attack my level eight town hall, which yeah, gave you a, that was like five, five points just from five, that. Five, one in the game. Actually. But also, yeah. everyone noticed everybody else sort of liked the fact that there it didn't cripple you too yeah. much when you got attacked. Actually, I'm feeling the reverse for this. I would have liked there to be a bit more penalty on this. Like, just a little bit, not enough to. The to... the, pro the problem is you you get into a, a situation there where the rich get richer, yes. like the people yeah. doing well, yeah, then are crippling the other people. Unless they start hitting each other, yeah, which is always possible. If they start hitting the weaker players, they go down and down and down, and they get more and more powerful. So it's a very difficult line mm. to walk. But I don't disagree because there is nothing. It's like um, oh, Milo's winning this halfway through. Just sit and watch. Yeah, hope we, we catch we, up. We can, we can stop it. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I don't know how much of a bearing it had on it but I, I also didn't buy any cards any sort of buildings where you could steal from them I was just producing and if I didn't use them just I did one. say this as well Tony and I haven't played this before whereas Jason and Molo have and I wonder whether that helped them bear in mind Jason and Molo were the ones that scored Finished, hugely yeah. and me and Tony were the ones that scored really crappily um <laughs> So I wonder if they kind of knew what sort of buildings to buy that are immediately useful or, um, you know, ones to avoid early and things like that. And kind of maybe that helped slightly in the early game or something. I don't know. Well, yeah, it could be. I mean, uh, my, one of my goals was to try and at least go for two of these for sure mm. and then try and do as many of these as I can. Mm. And then if any, any of the undead came out, I would try and go for them as well. Basically, just tick over points as much as possible. Yeah. Because I knew how fast this game is, that it will it'll end pretty quickly with us, you know, not having a massive amount of points. Mm. But there you go. Uh, so that's our thoughts on Vikings Gone Wild from Lucky Duck Games, um, a standard deck builder that it, that has some interesting mechanics. So if you like that, go check it out. Uh, there's obviously a ton of expansions. We'll be doing one with an expansion soonish. So thanks for watching. Uh, see you guys later. Bye.